Welcome, Planet Watchers, to another episode of Fireside Chat. Long time no see, but we are back with an episode with Claudio himself today. And uh, he will share some general updates. And I think we will just right jump into the topic. Um, so, hello, Claudio. What do you have to tell us today? Hi, Merlin. Good to see you. So, as you said, long time no see. Uh, we have to acknowledge the fact that this fireside chat has not been as regular as we would have wanted it to be for a number of reasons that I would explain. But let me get into something uh, substantial and interesting that, that is happening in Planet Watch. So the first item I'd like to mention is Road to Paris, related to IoT Space Challenge. So as you probably read in our announcement, at the end of this, of this month, end of October, we will be showcasing in the framework of a high-profile event taking place at the European Space Agency headquarters in Paris, a new Planet Watch data product. So what's the story here? You know, because we've been saying that for ages, that one thing that is lacking for air quality monitoring outdoors in our cities is a dense high-resolution sensor network that we are deploying thanks to our community, mostly via Erquino, type one sensors, right? So. The first big challenge that Planet Watch is, has been winning is to deploy in a fast and cost-effective way a dense outdoor air quality network. Now, in order to get really the job done of raising the standards of uh, outdoor air quality monitoring, in fact, you, you, you need a mix of things. Because on one hand, as you know, uh, satellite data, Earth observation data provide uh, a low resolution but global view of what's going on on the planet, including useful information about their quality. But that's low resolution. It's kind of a blurred picture, as we say. So what is missing there is the detailed, super high resolution information that we can get through our own network. But in fact, the best of both worlds is to put these two types of data together. And that's exactly what we are doing in by a, a, a project which has been endorsed by European Space Agency themselves and Deutsche Telekom. So we won a competition to do this pilot project, which is about data fusion, putting together Planet Watch dense data and the global picture from the satellite. Because if you put these things together, you really understand what's going on. You detect pollution hotspots, you can study the dynamics of pollution across the city, you can even make forecasts at some point, and you have a, a global product, which is not just of interest to uh, local government, but it can be of interest to the likes of Google and other global players, because it has the power of global, as well as the extra superpower that we have uh, in selected cities. So I like to call this, this a global or geolocal, if you prefer, view. It's global, but with some local extra power. So long story short, this will be showcased in a very important event in Paris, 30th and 31st of October. And you'll be hearing a lot about it. And you will also get some sneak peek into what this thing looks like in terms of maps. Last thing to mention is that we focus for this pilot on the city of Munich in Germany uh, for a number of reasons. First of all, we have a very good network in Munich. Second of all, of course, this is of particular interest to our partner, Deutsche Telekom. So there were a number of reasons to do it in Munich. It is happening. You will see some previews very soon, and we will tell you more as soon as this happens. Yeah, thank you, Claudio. Yes, um, I, in fact, had uh, the early access to this feature uh, while while it was still uh, in development and already start where, where we're trying to refine it and working on it. And I could actually showcase it even to some Planet Watchers uh, on, during the Digital X. Um, it was uh, quite cool to have this special setup um, set up because like it was not, uh, it had to be under certain safety conditions, but it was very cool. And the people, uh, it, it, it gives you a lot of detail into understanding the importance of having both sides and fusing them and, and how much both sides can refine their data based on it. So, um, yeah, and this 
basically leads us probably also in our into our next topic, which is generally Deutsche Telekom and Hubraum. Everyone should have seen that a lot was going on in this field for us. We had it on Twitter, we were on events and everything. So, Claudio, what else can you tell us now that this is a little bit longer ongoing already? Yeah, so let's start from the beginning. Our relationship with Deutsche Telekom started from this competition called IoT Space Challenge. There were six companies winning the competition, which essentially means being uh, entering uh, a Deutsche Telekom incubator called Hubraum, based in Germany and in Poland, and working on POCs, which are related to extracting value both from date from satellite data and something else, IoT sensors in general. So we already got a lot out of this um, uh, competition and partnership. First of all, we got visibility on many stages. They also facilitated our attendance at the Digital X event in Cologne, where Merlin attended. This is kind of a European version of the SEC taking place in, uh, sorry, of the CES taking place in Las Vegas every year. It's a very, very important event where we, not only you showcase what you have, but also you get leads for business development. So they've been very helpful and very supportive. They they paid all the costs for this uh, for the participation to this uh, trip. They will soon release an interview uh, with Merlin based on what happened at the event. And there are a number of tangible business leads coming out of it. Now, more broadly speaking, let us remember that Deutsche Telekom is the second largest telco in the world. And they appreciate what we do and they really mean it because, for example, as I probably already mentioned, they were proactive in uh, talking to their own customers, asking about their interest for air quality. And long story short, they are bringing themselves a Planet Watch commercial offer to one of their key industrial customers in Europe. Again, details will be released when things happen. So if our offer goes through, we start a pilot and uh, they authorize us to release the name, we will obviously, it makes no sense to do it today. The other very interesting uh, brainstorming with Deutsche Telekom is about building what I call a smart city service bundle, service package. Of course, their core business is to provide connectivity, in particular 5G connectivity to the cities, and they have lots of competitors out there. And they feel, and we feel, that if they marketed connectivity plus environmental monitoring in a single bundle, that could help them increase their competitive position. And that, of course, would mean that they would open big doors for us. So the idea is to build a package where when they deploy connectivity or when they sell connectivity, they also offer air quality monitoring on top via Planet Watch. And of course, the, the potential of this collaboration is huge. And it's not just futuristic, because as I said, a number of things are already happening and they're being proactive in reaching out to us. So let's hope it, we we build this from here. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I want to add to the fact that uh, as I was on the booth for Planet Watch during the Digital X, like it was a, a very, very impressive event and the scale really uh, impressed me and, and the people attending, like uh, to to give insight to that, like I was at some point, I was really surprised that some private Planet Watchers appeared because for the most part, it was like, high tier corporate clients and people from telecom and all the different branches because telecom is so huge with so many different departments that like you you had like 20 percent of people being all from some branch of telecom attending there but there were uh, people from the head office of the city also coming there were a few sm uh, smaller politicians coming even to our booth like it was a very well-rounded thing which was important for me to give visibility and I think we made a good impression there because like we um, contrary to others we had uh, our devices right at hand and could start a conversation about them people were very interested and we got also a few contact leads from this of course we can uh, it's it's not not good to now talk yet about it like we have to do those individual talks 
but it it was in all a very promising event and many people attending and we felt it was a good presentation of the company and I was happy to have the chance to be there. Then, um, yes, what also is maybe interesting for everyone is like we're taking a approach on Twitter now on really doing um, a lot of tweets about hyperlocal air quality. And this is a topic which most planet watchers know, but why are we going this arc now to represent hyperlocal air quality as a public company? As I said, well, the, ma the magic potion to understand air quality in the city is to have a global as well as a, as a local picture put together. The local is what is lacking at the moment. That's where Planet Wash is coming in and filling the gap. So we have two challenges ahead of us uh, as people on, on, on Earth willing to understand air quality. First challenge, deploy hyperlocal, have a dense terrestrial sensor network to get high resolution data. Second challenge is related to our POC is to put this data together in a picture which is both useful at a global and a local level. But I mean, the hyperlocal network was lacking. We are building it. We have a, a number of uh, endorsement and recognition about that. I don't want to repeat myself, but uh, in Madrid, we did deploy. We have a very good network. Local university reached out and said, please let us access your data because they are instrumental for, for our scientific research. So then on the network side, we got already some big success. And now we want, in parallel with growing and maintaining the network, we want to be very innovative in the actual way we use this data and deliver a very advanced data products. Once again, we are already leveraging very sophisticated tools like machine learning algorithms to ensure that the network is and stays, cal stays calibrated at all time. And we are deploying also AI tools to make the most of the data uh, in, a, in a perspective to develop uh, local pollution forecasting tools. But the real, I mean, the starting point is uh, having a solid, strong, reliable hyperlocal network. So hyperlocal is instrumental to advance the science of air quality monitoring. Yeah, um, on that topic also, another thing I was uh, able to present to a selected audience on the Digital X was uh, apart from our uh, data fusion project with Munich from the ESA, um, I could show uh, one of uh, our one of our developments that is currently not yet shown to Planet Watchers, but we will show some details soon about this. Claudio, what can you tell us about the one thing that we have also been working on? Yeah, the, the keyword is dashboard here because uh, let's face it, I've been talking a lot about science, science grade data. Science is a, a prerequisite. I mean, scientific endorsement is a prerequisite to business development and sales. So of course, eventually we want to sell. And when we do sell, we sell to real world entities. So for example, if you think about local government ent entities, okay, you tell, tell them about science, but their answer is, yeah, but where is the value for me? What's in it for me? I need something which is in easy to understand and allows me to take better decisions. And the dashboard here, here where, is where our new dashboard comes in. Uh, local government people don't want numbers. They want easy to understand dashboard with indicators, alerts, and recommendation. So having great data is very important in order to sell data products. The user experience is even more important. So we've been putting a lot of work into developing a, a dashboard for businesses and, uh, and governmental users where they can very quickly extract value in their language. So alerts can be in the southeast sector of the city, there is a pollution peak. Uh, we recommend that you modify traffic road circulation now for the next two hours and so far and so forth. So they want alerts and recommendations and dashboard must deliver this in a user-friendly way. So it's a big, uh, it's a big task and it's very important. 
Yes. Um, yeah, let, let me add to the fact because um, I was able also to use this new dashboard and to present it to people that uh, uh, especially on corporate level, the people really uh, liked the, the, the individual view, the overview and the individual view on sensors. We will uh, probably show, uh, our editor will probably show a few sneak peeks into this um, during the video now, but we will also um, do we will present it soon at some point and the key point here is that this is by no means a different visuality of the explorer or anything it is a it is a own standalone dashboard which is connected to our data api and it does pull the data from the API, like a data buyer would access the system. This gives you a good understanding because currently it's it's a closed work with certain projects and pilots that we are doing. We're collecting feedback, advancing it, refining the, the, the dashboard. And uh, in the end, this is one crucial part of data sales Basically, after after you get a certain portion of data, this is how it will be visualized to you on the sensor basis. Um, yes, and having having said this, um, we also have uh, one news piece uh, uh, for for all Aquino sensor owners currently. So, Claudio, what can you tell us? Yeah, as I say, I, we keep talking about the importance of our network. And so we need to, we mean it. So we, we need also need to show it uh, our interest uh, and our commitment in a very concrete way. So uh, given that times are tight and there are lots of challenges for all of us, we have decided that we are going to extend all the licenses of type one sensors, which means of Queenas essentially. So all licenses which expired and the sensors are still connected and sending data to our network, licenses will be uh, extended till the end of the year. So sensors which are streaming but don't have a valid license now, they will be re-licensed, if you see what I mean, till the end of the year. In addition, we're going to give three months for free uh, to add three months to the licenses of all type one sensors where we still have an active license. So, of course, we do this in part as a sign of appreciation to our community, but also because we need to strengthen our Type 1 outdoor network at the moment because of so many pilots and expressions of interest being received. This is also a stress test of our new improved infrastructure, but should never forget that having thousands of sensors streaming data every 15 minutes to a platform, it's very, very demanding in terms of uh, IT network operations. So that's a cost, that's a commitment, and uh, that's a secure, potential security issue. So we need to periodically run stress tests and make sure everything works. Now, I think I could jump into a connected topic here. So we are saying the network is very important. Uh, a few weeks ago, we, we we made a decision regarding the Madrid network, which raised a lot of questions. So let's go, let's get into it. So as I mentioned already, we have received a number of expressions of interest for data from the city of Madrid, including from two leading universities. Now, the process is the following: when our data sets attract specific attention, uh, data set in, in a specific area or region we feel that we should make extra steps to ensure that the, the network remains stable and reliable. So at the same time, we are a, a Web3 project, a grassroots project, so we want to keep it decentralized. So we need to find some sort of balance between these two things. So our current strategy to achieve this balance between uh, network stability and decentralization has been so far to, to purchase a fraction of the existing PlanetWatch network in a, to, in a way to build a hard core of sensors, which, which we know that they will not switch off if the local partner for any reason loses interest in the project. So you see, it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a difficult call because we don't want to just jump in and say, let's buy the network and centralize it again. That would be against the spirit of the project, and there will be some pros and some cons. 
at the same time, we can't afford the network to, to disappear when somebody is uh, expressing an interest, uh, doing a pilot, for example, and then you don't, you don't want to go dark, of course. So we made a decision. Uh, it was the first time we made this type of transaction. We made a financial transaction in Planets because for a number of reasons, we deemed to be in the best interest of the project. We do realize that this raised a lot of questions and it, has, it had an impact on the community. So in the future, we will carefully evaluate also alternative payment options and uh, we learn by doing. So every time we make a decision, which is important, we try to, to analyze pros and cons and make a decision in the best interest of the network. So this is how we proceed. That's, that was the, the process we followed in making this decision. And the uh, future will tell what is best to do next time, if you see what I mean. In a way, it all started from a positive fact, uh, namely, again, strong expressions of interest for our data. So this is part of, of our path to success, if you ask me. Yes, I also think like uh, it, it, it. Of course, it's 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 might have sparked some initial controversy um, because of this. But like uh, in the bigger picture, I think uh, it is important to understand that it is uh, was a necessary step to uh, to help the project or not to help the project, but to work in everyone's interest because like those POCs and pilots that are that that, that bundle around one city are of course a po core essence piece of visibility for us like uh, we need to be reliable with those pilots because they bring in additional business it is important for business development it is important for future data sales to ha have those things work 100 percent and in this case it, it needed also to be done for reliability reasons and now we have a very good sort of uh, planet watch uh, hub city for such things um, because like of course where interest was uh, signaled before um, it might also come again or this will probably happen again in the case of Madrid and we feel it is very important and it will really underline most of our important uh, POCs there also for scientific validation especially when we're working with universities yeah and um, like this thing like we're um, now doing a big big focus shift also in between on on the urgent topics like when it comes to hyper uh, local air quality which is of of course all in the prospect of of data sales and validation but also what is important to say there is maybe our network connection with climate collective like uh, we uh, announced that we are became members of the Kleiner climate collective earlier this year um, is there additional context that you can give Claudio? I mean, I, I, I had also the chance to join a lot of those uh, calls with you, but like, I, let's have you say it a little bit. Yes, as you remember, at the end of July, I believe we announced that we are now an official member of the Climate Collective uh, community. So what does this mean in practice? So Climate Collective is a network of very active and um, very good organizations which are broadly speaking all playing a role in uh, in, a, in the in the arena of uh, sustainability the the focus is on sustainability climate change mitigation and public health so they invited us to join we were happy to do it uh there are lots of interesting sessions including learning sessions uh networking with external entities which are potential for example investors or partners or advisors. And uh, we have a quite a unique spot in that organization because they are at the moment we are the only entity focused on air quality monitoring, while the majority of other entities focus on carbon, carbon offsetting. And uh, having said this, we are exploring synergies and there, there are some ideas coming up. Uh, there is a lot of brainstorming going on because if you think about it, air quality monitoring is to protect is about protecting everyone's health today, right here and right now. Carbon offsetting is about climate change mitigation. It's kind of a medium-term thing by planting 
forests or uh, building hydroelectric power plants, replacing uh, carbon plants. We are trying to mitigate climate change and build a better future. So clearly, there are we are all on the same line, and there might be interesting synergies between our project and these carbon offsetting projects, and we are, uh, yeah, engaging in discussions and brainstorming. So, as usual, it's too early to to say more, but we are uh, actively brainstorming, and I, I I dare to say building value out of our participation in climate collective. Yeah. Yeah, I um I I was able also to uh, to get a, a big glance into this because I also joined on some of the calls and I have to say it's a very interesting venue for us to build bridges to different uh, topics we can maybe also later shine a line a light on, but like uh, in general I I felt like it's a very well organized network giving us opportunities potential business leads but also like. Uh, giving us a unique spot with our sensors to make some good connections there. Yeah. And um, so for most people, it wouldn't make sense to transition from uh, a climate topic into a, a token burning topic. But actually, we in Planet Watch have some history there. Let's let, let's dive into the token burning thing. Okay, right. So once again, as you know, we've been uh, proposing to the community some decisions, some token model amendments, uh, which were approved by governance vote and some provisions regard token burning, a very significant decision to burn a fraction of the initial, of the total planet supply. Now, why is this not happened yet or not fully happened? Because as you know, a pre-burning account was set up and those planets will never come again into circle. But I mean, formally or technically speaking, we cannot say that we have achieved the burn yet. Now, uh, rather than getting into uh, the details of why this has not happened yet, uh, the answer is that in order to do this in a provable way, solid way, auditable way on the blockchain, there are a number of potential options. There are some options which are easier to implement, but which may not be recognized as bona fide burning by third parties, for example, by coin market cap. So we've been taking advice from the Algorand Foundation on what's the co-share most solid way of doing it. Um, there are a few options on the table, for, but for a number of reasons, the, this discussion has not been completed yet. We are actively discussing it with a with key stakeholders, because as you know, we are not, we don't have our own blockchain. We we live on the Algorand blockchain, so we need to to take their advice. We need to validate a number of points. So this is not finished yet, uh, and we'll keep you updated as soon as possible on this. But of course, there's no coming back. Uh, sensors which were put in the so-called pre-burning account are going to be permanently removed from the supply. The 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 challenge here is to do it in a kind of a provable way. Uh, and that's what we're working on at the moment. Yes, um, I want to add to the fact that uh, uh, we have to find a very good solution here because like uh, as most of you know that are in the topic, there is not there is not a real native uh, version of token ASA token burning yet on Algorand. And we have to find something that everyone complies with that works out with uh, text propositions with the foundation and everyone who needs to be involved. It's a thing about uh, having a verified version to do it and also uh, it's it's a form of uh, acknowledgement and and having consent of the also algorand for example so we are working on this um it will still take some time but as soon as we have something good to to, uh, to update on we will bring it up nothing changes from everything we announced, we just really need a, a, a token burning version which is complied to. This is like basically the short. Um, yeah. 
those those are probably the most burning questions now and um, then let's maybe also touch on the subject that uh, yes we we all have been very busy here at planet watch and we're 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 knowing and we will acknowledge that we are lacking a little bit on the communication side in general um yes in what picture would you put this topic claudio yeah, I think that well, I think the key point is to be honest and be straight. So times are uh, tough. So companies, young companies like Planet Watch, we are still, if you ask me, a startup. I mean, we are a successful startup. Uh, started with a three and a half year track record at this point, but we are startup in the sense that we need to be very, very careful on how we manage our resources, especially at times of global havoc. So long story short, we we feel that. Some resources have been lacking, which we, normal times we would uh, allocate to communication. So, for example, to be concrete, I think this fireside chat format had a lot of success when we launched it. My ideal world, we should have run it regularly, like every two weeks. We have not managed to do this because uh, we need to be, as I said, careful re resources because everybody has been working around the clock on uh, very urgent priorities, such as uh, delivering some technical tools, the dashboard, uh, doing the work needed to deliver the POC on data fusion by the end of October, a number of things. So again, the message is we, are, we realize, and we are sorry about it, that communication has not been as regular as it should have been. Um, the reason, of course, is not laziness, is uh, the fact that mm, resources are tight and we've been uh, giving priority to some uh, business development and technical actions. I think it's a bit of something in our DNA, if you ask me, and people tell us often, we, are, uh, we do a lot, we deliver a lot. I mean, we, you know how many things have been achieved by Planet Watch in terms of partnerships, in terms of technical development, uh, the number of transactions in the blockchain. Uh, we've done we've done a lot, and maybe we haven't been able to make the most of it at a communication level. So we we deliver, and sometimes we don't communicate enough. Having said that, as you know, we have a decent visibility worldwide. We are a partner of the World Economic Forum. We are a, a partner of Deutsche Telekom at this point and the European Space Agency. So we are getting notice. We did get notice. But maybe we should still work to improve uh, our visibility and in particular to be more regular in communicating uh, developments to, to our community, which is you, you guys. So we'll try to do it as well as possible. Fireside chat, I think, is a very good tool. So I think a mix of tweet and fireside chat should, uh, uh, should be the, the, the core of our communication with the community. Mm. We'll do our best to do this. Yes, I mean, uh, especially I, as I have basically hands also on the format. Um, I I have to add here that I we would we would like to do this, but currently everything in in Planet Watch is really focused on the point of being cost effective and working on priorities. Like we feel it's it's a big moment for us going into the next year, especially because certain certain things and topics are at so the pivot point, so to say. Uh, it's about the transition into into the data sales and uh, all the corporate things we're we're trying to achieve on a global level now. That um, often, like look at, looking back at my first episodes in Fire ch Side Chat, I always uh, also dreamed a little bit of having showcased different people of our company because we have very proficient scientists and developers in our team. But the thing is, like now lately, everyone is so busy on individual solutions that I cannot get the time because like people should also know we need we need to pool our resources in time. Like if I pull someone in to do sort of an interview, it will take away from his time and they are all working at super priorities. And I also have to 
give a big shout out to our tech team. They did a huge improvements on our network and on the cost efficiency of our network. Um, likewise, our scientists behind the scenes have uh, super good uh, calibration models. There is a lot and there is also a lot we want to show off, but now the time is really still on the work and for us to deliver on certain pilots, collaborations we do, Everything this year will be still very focused on achieving goals. This is basically it. And um, yes, and on this note, I think uh, we will we will call today's episode for for a close because uh, we also have to move on and do some important things. We will try to deliver something again. And we're now back to work and trying to bring something great for Planet Watch. So um I hope everyone is happy that we we came back and gave, gave, gave at least some uh, generalized updates and and so on. And uh, I would say um, see you next time. Keep watching the planet, everyone. And the last word goes to Claudio. Yeah, thank you, Merlin. Yeah, I can just confirm what you said. I think uh, we can do we can give a little perks to our community. I think we can give them a. a small sneak peek into what we'll be present at Edinburgh Month in, uh, in Paris. So you'll soon be seeing some pretty pictures and videos uh, with explanation, obviously, on Twitter. I think that that is something we can commit to. Okay. Okay. Then bye-bye, everyone, and uh, see you on the next episode of Fireside. Bye-bye. Thank you for your time, for your attention and your commitment. Keep watching the planet. Bye-bye. <laughs>